Hello and welcome to Engineering Deathmatch. We are here at Cisco Live in the DevNet Zone and we're filming our final episode of uh, Engineering Deathmatch uh, for the conference. This one is on data center design. So let's go ahead and meet our contestants. Up first is Ariel Liguori. Come on up, Ariel. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yes, I'm a network architect. I'm currently based in Argentina. I work for a large service provider and also for a partner. And I'm doing pretty much data center stuff all the days. I also love network programmability. So this is kind of the things that I do really like of every day, you know. Great. So up next, we've got Gaston Brait. Come on up, Gaston. So Gaston, um, this is kind of an unusual circumstance because Ariel actually was the one that referred you to compete against him. Any, any thoughts on that? Um, we do a lot of work together, uh, data center stuff, ACI mostly, so it kind of made sense. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, as I said, I do mostly ACI design, data center, VXLAN, 9Ks mostly. Um, Sounds good. You guys ready to hear the challenge? Yeah. All right. So, Show Me International Products is an international company based in Eminence, Missouri. While they have a broad variety of products in the past, their primary source of revenue is currently making bearings for fidget spinners. Oh wait, no, bearings for, for the machines that make fidget spinners. And driving parents around the world crazy. They're considering using you for a complete redesign and definition of their data center and cloud strategy, but before they commit to working with you, they would like you to consider a scenario and explain how you would architect it. So, you guys ready to get going? All right. This episode is sponsored by Cisco Spark. To learn more about how Cisco Spark enables team collaboration, including messaging, whiteboarding, video, and more, go to ciscospark.com. All whiteboard drawings in this episode were created using the Cisco Spark board. Contestants, are you ready? Yes, contestants, I'm the only one, but, <laughs> but the other guy, I think it's ready too. So. Your time begins now. Perfect. I think the challenge is actually pretty, pretty interesting because it's combining a lot of stuff like data center design for enterprise plus integration with open standards, which is quite common in these days. But actually, you have to have in mind how to figure it out, how to place that open standards between, within a data center and also the tools that will use like the C-level enterprise architects and the C-level decision makers to understand what benefit can take from this design. So actually it's pretty, pretty complex. I, I, I really love it. Regarding the amount of endpoints that we need, maybe two spines is not enough. We are talking about like 5K devices in an environment and 10K for production. So actually the IP addresses for this endpoint will be reside in the spine table, but they are not giving us any clue if they will be physical, bare metal, containers, they will be whatever of them. So I prefer to start with this simple design. And let's say that this could be scalable. Yes, always achieving with a close design, different spine. For ACI, we will also place AP controllers This way, controller one, controller, controller. This way, we have also an even part of controllers for redundancy. We could also have more, but the replica information in ACI is always placed in three shards. So more will add resiliency, but will not add more uh, redundancy. So with three, it's okay, and place it in different leaf to avoid any single point of failure. So the design seems pretty straightforward on the needs they have. Uh, they are really pointing towards a software-defined architecture where you can have a RESTful model, you can have the multi-tenancy, you can have uh, different approaches to security, uh, both fraud and segmentation on the application side and then integration to other solutions. Um, so I think it's going to be fun. Let's say we have our two sites and we're going to attack how we connect the sites and if it's just one straight fabric or different fabrics. But let's say this is the second side. I'm going to say that this is connected here somehow. I don't care how. And I'm going to have, let's say, 
four APs. It's not the best practice, but it's considered a scenario. I can have a placement where I can have three APs here, and I can have one APs here. Right. Um, the caveat with that design is, if this side fails, we're good. But if this side fails, then I'm not going to be able to make any changes on that side because of AP placement. Um, which may or may not be a problem, as we said. Flow is going to still be there. Everything that has been defined policy-wise is still going to flow. But odds are, if you had a whole data center outage, you're going to have to make some changes, basically on how you have your L3 outs and L2 outs and connection to the outside non-ACI environment. Um, so a smarter placement would be have two APIX here and two APIX here. Um, the best practice is going to tell you if we do two and two, you're going to have two that are going to be active on one side, and on the other side, you're going to have one active and one standby. That's so you don't get into split brain scenarios. Um, so when you have an interpod, of course, I will not leave this here. Remember that I have these three, four here. Well, I could definitely do this, but I don't recommend this because for the IPN design, what the, it's recommended to have five of them. But five active, and let's call this one, I will draw it in another color. This will be, well, I draw in another color because this will be a standby APIC, right? Why I'm doing this? Just imagine the case, I don't want this to happen to your enterprise, but this data center should crash out, right? So this DC will have only two, if I don't put this, APIX. But two in a cluster of five is not majority. So you, could, you can write any changes and you can do anything in this two. That's why I'm putting this APIC, and it will be power down, but will be in a standby way. So when this crash out, you came here, you took this APIC standby, you do some manual intervenience, and you can put this online again and it will behave like three and you could start just pushing policies or moving stuff called migration and something like that that you want to do in your data center which is alive. Can you please explain what uh, keeps the tenant separate? So uh, what keeps me from impacting the production tenant from the, like the dev tenant? So there's two sides to what's preventing. Uh, the first one is there are going to be different VRFs. So they're isolated. Uh, there's different tables. There is uh, on Vietnam on the ACI implementation of BS VXLAN is a specific field, so I can track which tenant it belongs to when I apply policy. So that's the first piece when it's going to be separate. The second thing is how VLANs work on ACI is different. Um, I can have my fabric tab and I can define you're going to be VLAN 10, right? Yeah. But the thing is, until that VLAN 10 is defined also on the tenant, on the endpoint group for the mapping, that VLAN doesn't really get instantiated. You can bypass that requirement if you, when you're doing the deployment, instead of saying immediate, instead of saying on demand, you do immediate. So that might change, but there's separate BRFs. And then you have the policy layer with the contracts that will enforce traffic or not. I can have intertenant traffic if that is a requirement, a specific type of contract that's called an interface contract that I, and I can export and import so I can have uh, leaking between those tenants if that's a requirement. I can have, um, there's requirements or designs where I have DMC as a tenant. So the tenant is DMC, receives all the traffic, and then I do leaking to other things. The other option where that could be, and you can do it on the common tenant, which by define you, you can share, or you can do it on a separate one, depending on the specific requirement. But I can say, okay, you know what? AD, DNS, DHCP, all the things that are common to the environment, I will put on a tenant that I'm going to share with everyone. For multi-cloud, actually, there, remember, there is another player coming here. It's not only OpenStack. We need cloud center. And why cloud center? Because cloud center is, will be the one who will interact with your OpenStack instance and with your public cloud. And what you will actually do is create for each different tenant that you will have in your OpenStack, because in OpenStack you will have different projects for the end user or for the test environments that you have or QA or production. And you will have to interact also with the public cloud. But from cloud center, you could talk to both worlds because it will use at the end cloud center. Cloud center. Let's say it will call to OpenStack API. And when I want to deploy a tenant to the public cloud, it will talk, let's say, to AWS. And I will say, I want that tenant spawn there. Okay, it will create an instance, let's say like you have a virtual server or Elastic Cloud Server, 
dedicated to that tenant. Okay, so in, in Amazon, in this case, just to focus on one of them, you have the concept of VPCs. So those VPCs or virtual private contacts will be isolated because it's the offering that they are bringing to you. So you have to match every tenant that you have, in this case, to a VPC in AWS. Okay. So you have the same tenancy in the both worlds. That's a manual mapping, right? Yes, actually, it's not a manual mapping, but in Cloud Center, when you create the tenant, you will create a new, uh, it will choose your tenant from your OpenStack to the mapping okay. on your AWS. Okay. Yes, but actually, you have to put and say, okay, I want to create a new VPC in Elastic Cloud. Um, so, again, I can leverage uh, Cloud Center to have a mapping between the policy here. The thing is, depending on the cloud provider you have, um, the policies might not be the same, and depending on the ACI deployment, the logic might not be the same, but I can use that as my central point of view of my environment, regardless of the clouds and the sites. And up and yes, actually, as you mentioned, there's something that you have to do manually. Uh, actually, with Cloud Center, you still have to talk with the, uh, manually to AWS and do that mapping. I do, I'm expecting like some tool hopefully open source or by Cisco or by another vendor, let's say, that could have this whole in mind at the same time. Actually, if you saw that I moved to the BNF approach because it was the only way to maintain a 4 to L7 with the different clouds, but it should be awesome if we could have something like, let's say I have physical devices here because maybe in production I have like tons of requirements like a million of connections per second or something like that and I could not achieve that actually in these days with a virtual device and I would put a, a, fire, a physical one but I want to abstract that policy from that physical device and push to a, a device in a public cloud and have the same concepts behind. Alright guys, so we have just wrapped up the uh, data center design challenge here at Cisco Live. Uh, guys feeling good? Feeling like you're Gonna take it home? Maybe. <laughs> um, so what I will say is the judges came back and they said that you both obviously knew the technology and, and had a very good understanding of how the technology worked. Um, they actually asked me at one point if both of you could win. Um, I told them no, this is engineering deathmatch, it doesn't work like that. So we do have a winner after much deliberation um, and that winner Congratulations, Ariel. Thank you so much. Gave us what we needed, so. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So does that mean we have a winner? I think that means we have a winner, right? I mean, I'm thinking if we both agree that um, he, he was a little better, again, I, I want to make sure that we're not saying that he was it was a landslide no. or anything like that. Um, I would say that Ariel won, so. Yeah, so we have a winner. Also, we, we have a winner. <laughs>